Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have 1 plus 1 over x to the power x plus 1 equals square root of 27. And we're going to be solving for x values. So we're going to be looking at this problem from a couple different angles. We're going to look at the graph. But first, we're going to do a little bit of substitution uh, as well as do a little bit of calculus to understand uh, what is going on. So, first of all, you can go ahead and change the square root of 27 to 3 root 3. That's one way to write it. Or, if you think about 27, it is 3 to the third power. You could also write this number as 3 to the power 3 halves. Now, this might be better uh, because you don't want to write it as a radical. Uh, it's better to leave it in exponential form because, as you can see here, we have a base and an exponent. So I basically want the exponent to look like my exponent and the base to look like my base. So let's go ahead and do the following. Uh, we can go ahead and replace 1 over x with something, like how about t. And then from here we're going to get x equals 1 over t. And we're going to get 1 plus t to the power 1 over t plus 1 equals 3 to the power 3 halves. The right hand side stays the same. The left hand side is written now in terms of t, which is a little better because now the base uh, kind of looks uh, like a polynomial instead of a rational function. Great. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of work here in the exponent. So let's write the base first as t plus 1. And then I want to make a common denominator. So then I can write this as t plus 1 divided by t, and that can, that is equal to 3 to the power 3 halves. Now, if you look at this expression very carefully, you're going to notice that t plus 1 equals 3 actually works, right? So t plus 1 equals 3 actually works. That means t is equal to 2. Oops, I think I, was, I meant to look at the bottom one. So if t plus 1 is equal to 3, t plus 1 is equal to 3, then t is going to equal 2. So everything is going to work. In other words, t equals 2 is a solution to this equation, just by guess and check. But of course, we are looking at the one-to-one -one correspondence. If t equals 2, those expressions are definitely going to be equal. But of course, we, if there are any other solutions, we have to find them. So t equals 2 means what? We said that t is equal to 1 over x, or x is 1 over t from here x becomes 1 half. Now, if you consider the original equation, it probably wouldn't be too hard to guess x could be 1 half either, even though you're going to have to do a little bit more work, because this would be 1 over 1 half, which is 2. Then you'll get 1 plus 1 over 1 half, which is 3, and then to the power 1, 1 half plus 1, and this would be 3 to the power 3 halves. After doing a little bit of work, we could verify it. So x equals 1 half is a good solution. Are there any other solutions? So before we look at the graph of this function, let's go ahead and do a little bit of calculus. So you can go ahead and consider this function, f of x equals 1 plus 1 over x to the power x plus 1. And this should kind of look familiar to you if you dealt with natural log or Euler's number before. And I'll talk about that too. But uh, looking at this function, I can definitely ln both sides and then differentiate it, so on and so forth. That's not going to be very helpful in terms of trying to solve the resulting equation because it's not going to be easy to solve analytically. Uh, instead of that, I'm going to show you two things. First is the Euler's number, or you can also think about it as compound interest. So you have some money and you just apply compound interest to it, 100% uh, or any other percent, but you do it uh, at certain intervals, right? Let's say you compound it every month. You, com you can compound it every week. You can do it every day. You can do it every hour or every minute or every instant. When you do it instantaneously, that's when our uh, Euler's number kicks in. In other words, looking at it from a limit perspective, limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x, to the power x is Euler's number, which is e. And this is about 2.7. Great. 
Great. So how does that help? Well, when you look at the graph, this is going to make more sense, but we don't have x in the exponent. We have an x plus 1. Does that matter? Well, let's take a look. What happens if we try to take the limit as 1 plus 1 over x to the power x plus 1 as x approaches infinity? I can definitely go ahead and separate this, split it up into two factors like 1 plus 1 over x to the power x and 1 plus 1 over x to the power 1 or just 1 plus 1 over x. Now as x approaches infinity, you know that this approaches e. And what about this one, right? Well, as x approaches infinity, this is going to approach infinity. So 1 over x is going to approach 0. 1 plus 0 is going to approach 1. So you're going to multiply by 1. It doesn't matter. So actually, if you add something to x in the exponent, it doesn't matter. If you make it 2x, it does make a difference, but because then you have to square e. That's a different story. But when you add a number, it is so insignificant. So it doesn't matter. Make sense? Okay, so far so good. Now, our limit is e, but that doesn't tell us anything about whether the function is decreasing or increasing. It just says we have a horizontal asymptote, right? Oh, speaking of asymptotes, is there a vertical asymptote? And the answer is yes, there is. Why? Because remember, f of x is x plus 1 over x to the power x plus 1. And as you can see here, as x approaches infinity, Houston, we have a problem. It's probably better to write it this way. So you can see what is going on. But as x approaches infinity, uh, oh, did I say infinity? OK, this is what I meant. As x approaches 0, OK, as x approaches 0 from the right, by the way, we have to make sure that we keep the base positive first, because with negatives, it's a different story. Anyways, so uh, x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote. The function is undefined. It, can't, uh, it can approach that line, uh, the y-axis, but it can never touch it. Make sense? Never ever. You can cross the horizontal asymptote, but never ever cross the vertical asymptote. Anyways, you'll see all of these on the graph, so hopefully this, make, this will make more sense. But this idea tells you, as x approaches 0 from the right, this is going to approach positive infinity. Why is it important to approach from the right? Because it's going to approach infinity. If you approach from the left, that's a different story. Make sense? So this is going to approach positive infinity. So in other words, we have a function that actually comes from infinity, 0, infinity. So it's going to decrease because eventually it's going to approach y equals e, which is uh, the uh, horizontal asymptote, the limit at infinity. So if you have an infinite limit, that indicates vertical asymptote. If you have a limit at infinity, a finite limit at infinity, that indicates a horizontal asymptote. Make sense? OK, great. So what's that supposed to mean? That means our function is going to be decreasing. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And we'll finish up real quick. So here's the graph of our function, which is kind of interesting. And why is there a cutoff? It's not continuous. Yay. OK, so the problem here is between negative 1 and 0, our base becomes negative. So our function is not well defined for negative bases, the exponential function. And we only have one solution, and that is x equals 1 half. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you soon with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.